I'm not joking that when I unboxed this remarkable paper pro and started using it for about five minutes, I asked myself, why in the world did I just spend so much money on this device? Quite frankly, as soon as I started using this device, a couple limitations came to mind that I hadn't really thought about before I purged it. Namely, that there is no capacity for Kindle books on this, which means my entire Kindle library is basically useless on this, and no audiobooks. So same goes for my Audible library. But with those out of the way, how does the rest of this device fare? Now I got the Remarkable Paper Pro with the upgraded pen because I learned with my Kindle Scribe last year that I did actually want the upgraded pen, but I was too cheap to shell out for the keyboard, which I would have liked to have tested, but just in principle, I didn't wanna pay something like $800 for this e-ink setup. I also did not go for Remarkable's folio case because I did not want to pay for that either. So instead I found a pretty good option on Amazon that actually fits like a glove and I don't even remember the brand, but I'll leave a link down in the description. Highly recommend this because I just did not feel confident putting this in a bag without a case on. And this thing fits just perfectly. I love it, it's great. But let's talk about my experience with the Paper Pro. And you can check out the chapters below to see exactly the sections that I'll be talking about in this video. But first, I wanna talk about design because I think that is the best thing this has going for it. If Apple made an e-ink device, I think it would be really similar to this in terms of the hardware. This thing is a unit. It feels and looks great. Incredibly high quality, super well put together. Even down to the magnets in the stylus and how it connects to the side of this device, it feels solid. It is a well-built good looking machine. And even down to the textures of the screen and the material of the pen, I'm just a big fan. And there's something just about that kind of grippy material on the pen that just makes it feel super high quality. The writing experience is really good and it's a very satisfying experience all around. Now with that being said, the magnets in the stylus are still liable for failing if you hit it at the right angle. And so I did actually drop my stylus and it did damage the tip and so I had to replace that but it was actually a really satisfying experience replacing the tip on this pen you kind of just push it in the little box and out pops a new one now it's important to note that this is a fairly substantial device it's pretty big and it is bigger than Remarkable's previous devices so here's a size comparison of that so here is the iPad Pro 11 this is the M4 next I have the Kindle Scribe first generation and you can see it is a little bit shorter or a lot shorter but a little bit wider than the ipad then i have an ipad mini this is with the 8.3 inch display and finally i have a kindle paperwhite and then you can see a piece of eight and a half by 11 printer paper dwarfs everything so i'll put the ipad pro 11 next to it again face to face so there's no camera hump there and you can see what that looks like and then the kindle scribe you can see are very similar in width, but very, very different in height, and also very similar in thickness. And finally, for good measure, here's that piece of paper again, which I'll put underneath it. And you can see the outline of a piece of printer paper, which I think will probably give you the best look at this tablet. Now there are some weird aspects about this display. For one, it is nice that there is a backlight, which I didn't realize wasn't a thing on the previous Remarkables, but there's no color temperature control, which is weird. And at night, you can't make it any cooler. It's going to be a very white, very kind of bluish cool display. The other thing is that when this display is at max brightness, when you're in a dark environment, there is an entire backlit halo around the edge of the display, just a ton. And I'm not sure if that's my unit or if that's everyone's but it's just it's kind of crazy i don't mind that much but for a device this expensive it's a little bit surprising and then there's no fine tune adjustments for the backlight intensity it's zero through five in terms of the intensity so you have six different options again just a little surprising that you don't get more granular controls over the display of course now there is the color display which I've seen other reviews say like, yeah, it's kind of cool, but kind of not necessary. And I agree. I think it genuinely is useful. I think color sticks in the brain better. I think it's just a better experience, especially for students if you're doing a lot of highlighting in different colors. Is it worth the extra cost? 
Maybe, maybe not. I think it's a cool feature to have, and I think it's better than not having it. And I'm not a graphic novel or graphic comic user, but I think that if you are, this is a pretty cool experience. I can't compare it to any other color ink devices. I don't have any others. I don't have the new Kindle Colorsoft, but it seems pretty good to me. My expectations are, are pretty mid for this and they are reach. Now in terms of the writing experience, it's excellent. It does come down to personal preference. I think it's very good. In terms of latency, it's not really a problem I've noticed. You can pixel peep and um, compare it to other devices and slow down the resolution. For me, my general usage, it was very good. And there are some other reviews out there that will kind of pixel peep and slow down the footage. Now, like I said, I got the pen with the eraser and I'm a little bit surprised it doesn't come with a third button like a lot of other devices do that could be used for a highlighter or a second tool or something like that. That's a little bit disappointing. And also the eraser is fine, but there is no stroke erase. So you can't erase an entire character. It's always going to be kind of a granular eraser, just like a real pencil, which in my mind, it kind of loses the digital effect by having it be this way. Now there's an alternative. You can tap with two fingers to undo and three fingers to redo, which will take out the entire stroke that you just did. Otherwise you just have to choose between three erase sizes, or you can select something to erase it. Now there are eight different style options plus a highlighter that you can choose from and you can see what those look like. So I actually have three pens, ballpoint, fine liner, and calligraphy. You have a highlighter in several different colors. You have two pencil options, regular, which is kind of hard to write with in my opinion, and mechanical. Then you have a marker, a paintbrush, and a shader. So you can do a variety of things, and some of them are pressure sensitive, some of them are tilt sensitive, and some of them are neither, and some are both, and you see what those look like. I personally think the first two pens do a really good job, and I generally go with the ballpoint pen because I like being able to have the pressure sensitivity. Now once something is written, you can select it and you can resize it, but you can't change the color or the pen style. You can only cut it, copy it, convert it to text, resize and rotate. Okay, now I'm just gonna show you the different colors of the highlighter. Now, as you might expect, the yellow definitely pops the most, and I would say the orange and green pop the second most. The pink and the blue don't really pop out that much, and obviously the gray is just gray. So there are your options there. Now with the highlight tool, you're always able to hold, and it will straighten it out. So you can see just like that. And then if you're working with the text instead of handwriting, you can actually utilize the snap to text function, which works pretty well. So I'm gonna do a half-hearted highlight and you can see it did a proper highlight. You can see it does round up, so if it touches another word, it'll probably highlight that. Now pretty much anywhere in the software, you are able to zoom out and just get more screen real estate. So if you want to add some notes, you can do that. And then you can pinch the zoom back in. And if anything overlaps on the original page, it'll still show there. And you can zoom back out to see that again. And then you can tap this, which will also bring it back to full screen. And then you can go to your next page. Now layers is a really cool feature and one that I wasn't even really expecting here. I can see this being useful in several circumstances, kind of the most prominent being if you are studying, you can kind of scribble over uh, a keyword and then hide or show a layer to quiz yourself. And there's tons of other uses if you have a document that you want to have a edited version, but also a non-edited version available. You can just hide your edits on a new layer, which is pretty handy. Or if you're drawing something or there's just tons of use cases, it's a pretty nifty feature. Now the file organization is pretty simple. This is not a complicated system. You have a homepage and folders, and you have a favorite section and you have tags for categorization. It's pretty simple. Now, one thing that totally surprises me and disappoints me is that the only way you can search through documents is if you convert your handwriting to text. You can search titles and you can search keywords that you manually apply, and you can search any text that is written in the documents or converted in the documents. You cannot search your handwriting. I just can't believe that you can't search through your handwriting. That is so limited. 
Now sending files to and from the device is pretty fast and pretty painless. You can get a Chrome or a Microsoft Office extension to send things and convert things directly to your Remarkable and it downloads very quickly. You can get the Remarkable app on your desktop or on your phone and also share things into it, which is very quick. Now it supports PDF and JPEG and a couple other formats and docs. It does not support PowerPoint, which is a little disappointing. So you will have to convert any PowerPoints to PDF or if you're in the PowerPoint app, you can just send it and it will convert it for you. Okay, now I want to show you the speed at which things deliver to this device. So here I have a Marvel comic, 23 page color, 16 megabytes, and I will send that to Remarkable. And we'll see how long it takes to pop up here. You see it's syncing, so it should be any second now. And this is a much bigger file than you would typically send. And here we have it. So you can see here what this translates to on this Remarkable Paper Pro. Obviously much more muted colors, but honestly for an e-ink, still really impressive. All right, now I have a PDF I wanna send, so I'll go ahead and share this into the Remarkable app. This is only 1.7 megabytes, and you see this should load much quicker, because it's only a tenth of the size, and you can see it's almost instantaneous. So that's, in my mind, really pretty impressive. And I'll show you what this looks like on the iPhone versus the Remarkable. And these PDFs you can actually interact with. So if I go back to the table of contents, I can actually interact with it. So I'll go to rule number 10. And it'll take me right there, which is really handy. You can also share things from the Remarkable to your device. So you can email it to yourself or you can log on to the website and you can see your notes. There's also the share screen feature, which I don't know if I would ever use this, but I guess for various uh, business applications, it could be useful. And in the times I've tested it, it works flawlessly. It's really quick, very accurate, and it'll actually show the color in kind of its full depth and resolution that doesn't quite translate on the Remarkable itself. So it's a really cool feature if you ever need to present exactly what you're doing on your Remarkable and what you're seeing in real time. Now the battery life, as you'd expect, is phenomenal. It lasts super long and charges with USB-C. I feel like I don't really have much more to say than that. So at the end of the day, this is a phenomenal device. I really like using it. It's built like a tank, super premium, high quality, and I enjoy riding on it. It makes for a great kind of single use, limited, dumb device with still some basic features like backing up that you'd really like. And the color is just a great touch for highlighting, for PowerPoints, for notes, for whatever you do, especially for students, anyone reading graphic novels and other colorful things. However, there's a few features about this that just makes it really hard for me to recommend. So the first limiting factor for me is the price. This is just a really expensive product and the more features you want from Remarkable, including the keyboard and the stylus and a case, just the more expensive it gets. Secondly, I have a big collection of Kindle and Audible books and I just can't use those on here. Next, there's no handwriting search support, really? All in all, I enjoy using this device. I already purchased it and I'm gonna keep using it, but if I had to do it again, I don't think this is the device I would recommend to people, which doesn't mean it's not for you. It very well might be. It's an awesome device overall, just with a high price tag and some limiting factors. I'll leave a link down in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Buying it from my link will help me out, but you don't have to. Let me know what you think about this device, and I'm excited to compare this to the new Kindle Scribe very soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that, and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. This is my first remarkable experience. How remarkable is it?